to talk a little bit about. I'm going to go ahead and pause it there, and um, this will be available to students um, to um, view the whole Study Sync TV if you would like to. But right now, um, the three of us just want to kind of uh, share some insights about this piece and um, about this unit. Would you like to start, uh, Ms. Morales? Yeah, I like how they brought up some textual evidence about, is it about the loss of faith? Because we hear several times he talks about God and faith in the excerpt, and I think it can be really confusing. And probably it was confusing for Ellie as well to process the, the moment. Uh, I thought that was a really profound part that the students talked about. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think, you know, this piece, is you know Ellie's memory and, and his experience, but it's it's the the same story that so many millions of people experienced, um, and I think he talks about that in the introduction to the the book um, that he felt called to write this because even as horrific as it was, again the kids mentioned this in the thing, you know this is you know burned into his mind you know that he'll never forget this. Um, that's how he starts the the passage, but. He says that he has to write this in order to be the voice for all of those who, you know, were silenced. In fact, the beginning of the excerpt that you have um, is really a poem. Uh, we could take that part, the never shall I forget, all the way down to line eight, which just ends with, with never. We could take that out and it's a poem in itself um, filled with um, repetition, first of all, uh, re repeating not only the word never, but never shall I forget, never shall I forget, never shall I forget, never shall I forget. And, um, and normally in English, we would say, I will not forget, I will not forget. And um, instead, Ellie takes the word never and puts it first. And then shall I forget, um, repeating this, this mantra, this um, what becomes a life mission for him, not only that he will not forget, but to make sure that the world does not forget and that the world, because in his opinion, he says the moment we, we forget or we stop talking about it, it happens somewhere else. And indeed, genocide is happening today. It is happening in other parts of the world. And, um, and when Ms. Tinoco talked about, um, you know, students say, how did this happen? How did this happen? It, it happens kind of the same way all the time. And it happens at night in the shadows, in darkness, when people um, feel like they can't speak up. Um, so just that, that opening poem and that repetition and the, the images that he puts in, they're, they're in his brain, but then when I read it, he puts them into my brain and he put them out into the world, um, you know, as this, his calling. Yes? Yes, I agree. I agree. So, so we can, um, we're going to go ahead and um, talk a little bit about what's happening in Zoom this week and, um, and take a look at the folder and um, go ahead. Ms. Tinoco, do you want me to share the pyramid? Yeah, if you want to just share that just as a little preview of what we're going to be doing in our Zoom classes this week. So just like how last week we worked on those Google Slides, um, and it was more of a working class, um, and we're there to answer questions, you know, of course, too. Um, but this week we're going to be working on something called the Pyramid of Hate, and it, it does look at this um, kind of idea of genocide as a whole of how does this happen, um, and what can we do to prevent it, and we will do that through looking at clips of survivors. Um, and kind of by talking about the progression of how we go from, um, you know, inappropriate, you know, racist jokes to genocide and how not speaking out um, against these injustices can kind of exacerbate, you know, in a society. Um, and so you'll see that there's multiple slides. We'll talk you guys through this. We'll watch the videos. We'll take a look at um, some more of this. And then we'll also talk about where we think these people's stories kind of fall in the pyramid. Um, and so on. So that will be in your folder and that will be what we are doing on Zoom this week. But it's something that you're going to be leading them through. So yes, it is yes. uh, really important that everyone hit that Zoom um, this week so that um, you are led through this experience. It's really not something that you would do uh, independently um, as opposed to the night um, slides. slides. 
um, with Ms. Tinoco that we talked about with, um, you know, move this here, type this in, et cetera. You could do that independently, mm -hmm. um, although we're here to support you. But the Pyramid of Hate is done in a Zoom. Yes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, thanks so, so much to Stanoco for making that. I get a lot of um, student slang in the classroom where students use uh, words that could be racist and they really don't know how those words are racist and affect other people. So I'm so excited to be in your Zoom class yeah. and to hear more about that and have that conversation. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the folder when you, uh, you know, open up the week of April 27th, there will be um, videos where you start here. And um, again, it's really important that you watch those before you get into the Zoom class. Um, and then we'll have our attendance. Here's the pyramid of hate assignment required. The night slides we've taken you through, these are required. This is um, the Holocaust historical background slides. These are, this is what we started our video with. A um, lot of information, a lot of original um, sources and factual detail um, for you there. This is the link to um, the videos that we've been sharing with you from a ABC News. This is uh, 1941 to 1945. And so it's gonna really focus on World War II and um, uh, worth, worth it right mm -hmm. worth 45 minutes i've been really enjoying these um and then uh we are going to have uh some fun um adding some new activities here um and then down here you're going to see uh found poem this is going to be required for my students and uh available as optional and miss chibi is going to be coming on in on this the librarian uh slash poet of verdugo and she'll be leading us through um found poems uh, based on Holocaust um, memoirs. And uh, the photo journal, I think by next week, we're gonna wanna make sure that you guys have at least two entries on that. So we'll be um, bringing that up to the forefront. And, um, and then finally, we've got uh, some read theory extra credit. Yeah, I didn't talk to you guys about that. That's okay. That's happening with your class um, and not necessarily with my class, but just take a look and see what's going on in here. Did you want to talk about the Kahoot Challenge, Ms. Morales? So the Kahoot Challenge is really cool. So Kahoot has made it a possibility that we can play Kahoot together, but separately um, to practice social distancing. So you're going to click the Kahoot and then you're going to click the link and it's going to guide you to picking a name and playing the quiz. And then when you get to the end, you're going to see the leaderboard with everybody else who's played and you're going to get to see where you were placed and you can play it more than once if you want. And maybe we'll play it in Zooms too. Cool. All right. That is um, the unit. It's, it's very um, sobering, especially coming off of the Great Depression. But you know what? Th these are real. These are real things. And, um, and the history, the, the literature, um, the whole uh, view of it is, um, it's important that we see it and that we, we don't forget. Well, and I think it's important to, you know, to remember that, you know, the whole world is going through, you know, a difficult time right now. And I think it's, it's something that when we can look back at history and see the hardships people have lived through in the past and still persevered and still gone on and still, you know, found hope and all of these things. I think that's such a powerful message. And hopefully that's something that is a comfort to our students knowing that, you know, this, this difficult time, it'll get better. And people have, have lived through difficult times before. Yes. I agree, Ms. Tinoco. I've seen a, um, some things in the news about, xenophobic behavior, maybe treating um, a certain culture differently because that's where the virus came from. But even I've heard um, in other places, they're treating foreigners differently too. So I think it's a really important conversation for us to have uh, during this time as well. Uh, xenophobia, would you like to define that for everyone? It's a great word. Xenoph <laughs> xenophobia would be a fear or bias against foreigners in your country. So for example, if I lived in China, um, I would maybe say unkind words to a foreigner or I would not want them to rent a room in my hotel. Uh, those would be examples of xenophobic behavior. 
And that's right. certainly something that we can touch on more in our Zoom classes. All right. I think that's it, everyone. And um, have a great week. This is the end of April. Um, but we still have a ways to go to get to the middle of June. So um, we're showing up. You're showing up. Um, you know, let's keep going. We got this.